Hare Krishna. How are you today? Recording in progress. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, can we start? I will just offer some prayers. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tismai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschachadesha Darine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare Okay, so good morning everyone. So welcome to our Bhakti Vai Baba. We're studying the second canto. The last class we were covering chapter one. Anybody remember anything from the first chapter? Yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandava Pranam. Uh, I remember one uh, very important point that you mentioned uh, in different discussion that Krishna consciousness is the best service industry. Okay. And uh, yeah, the start of the chapter actually uh, we see that Srila Shukadev Goswami, uh, Shila, yeah, Shila Shukadev Goswami mentions that. Uh, uh, how is the life of a Grihamedi? And we discussed uh, in detail about different uh, aspects of Grihamedi who are very envious uh, of others. And then he discusses about uh, how to become self-realized and uh, discuss in detail about uh, uh, the Harinam Sankirtan is the best process and uh, then we discussed about how to do Harinam in the right mood and uh, right uh, attitude. Hare Krishna. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Oh, someone else can add one thing? Just one thing? Hare Krishna Maharaj. We also discussed about you know, this uh, Nama Parada and uh, also that Apashyatam uh, Atma Tuttam, people who are blind, Yes. And, uh, yeah. and also, uh, Prabhupada mode is, it is Loka Hitam. It's also mm -hmm. What else did we discuss? Maharaj, we discussed about the universal form, whether it is uh, factual or transcendental or imaginary, that aspects with references to right. Bhagavad Gita. Right. Try to draw. Yes. So that was something. Right. Sukadeva Goswami introduced meditation on the <laughs> impersonal feature of the Lord, the, well, the universal form. Okay, very good. So we'll go on from here. Uh, connection with chapter 2. The first, chap the, se the first verse of the second chapter begins with Sukadeva Goswami giving an example about Lord Brahma. He says that Lord Brahma was meditating on how to do the recreation and he got the pot potency to do it by meditating on the universal form. Alright, 
Someone like to read this for me, please? Thank you, Mr. Maharaj. Sukhadev Goswami recites, Sukhadev Goswami recites, a previous authority to verify the potency of meditating on the universal form. She Sukhadev Goswami said, formerly prior to the manifestation of the cosmos, Lord Brahma, by meditating upon Virata Rupa, they gained his lost consciousness by appeasing the Lord. Thus, he was able to rebuild the creation as it was before. Thank you, Prabhu. Right. So this was the power of meditating on the Virata Rup, that re he regained his lost consciousness and so he could do the recreation again. Okay, so second chapter begins with that example of Lord Brahma. And then we hear about detachment in the world of names. Suk Sukadeva Goswami wants to encourage Maharaj Parikshit to be really detached, not to keep any attachments. He wants Maharaj Parikshit to be convinced that he can go back to Godhead and he wants him to give up any kind of affection he has for the material world. So then he will go on to describe about meditation on the super soul. In the first chapter he was describing about contemplating the virata rup or the universal form of the Lord which is more the Brahman aspect of the Lord. But now in this chapter he's going to describe about meditating on the Lord in the heart, the super soul and the features will be described and then we'll hear first of all how one can uh, give up the body and immediately go back to Godhead, immediately, quickly. Of course it's a difficult process. Let's describe first of all and then he would describe a more gradual process going through the different planets and giving up the different coverings and getting and going through the different coverings of the universe, penetrating into the spiritual world. It's a gradual, there's, gra there's two processes. One is immediate and then one is gradual. And then Sukadeva Goswami will give his answer to Maharaj Parikshit. Answer Maharaj Parikshit's question about how to, what we should hear and chant and remember and worship at the time of death. All right. So, coming back to Lord Brahma and the example of Lord Brahma and his forgetfulness. Forgetfulness. We all have that quality. <laughs> We all have that ability, forget, we can forget so many things. We hope we, can, we hope we never forget Krishna, but forgetfulness is always there. All right, so this forgetfulness of the living being, beginning from Brahma down to the lowest insignificant ant, is a tendency which can be, which can be counteracted by meditation on the virata rup of the Lord. And as soon as this forgetfulness is removed, the vaya vasaya buddhi, as mentioned here and in the Bhagavad Gita, follows at once. All right, who knows this verse, vaya vasaya buddhi? Anybody know where this is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita? 241, you know this verse? An important yes, verse. Yes, tell me. Meaning? It means that uh, uh, one, that is, we have to be, um, our intelligence should be one pointed, uh, otherwise, uh, it becomes multi branched. This part of Krishna consciousness, we have to take up this as a, a focused point. Yes. One point, our intelligence should be diverted in that way. Those who are on this path are resolute in determination and their aim is one, 
O beloved child of the Kurus, the intelligence of those who are irresolute is many-branched, right? Bahusaka, as you said, right? Many-branched. So, if they're irresolute. So, when we get over this forgetfulness and we come to this vaya vasaya buddhi, we become more focused, we become fixed, resolute. So this, ascer this ascertained knowledge of the living being leads to loving service to the Lord with the, which the living being requires. From the first verse of the second chapter of the second canto purport. Right? So Lord Brahma, he revived, he was able to uh, recreate the, the universe by meditating on the Viratha Rup. As, it's, as Prabhupada says here, meditation on the Viratha Rup counteracts this forgetfulness. So it's good for us. Always remember Krishna. All right? Going ahead, this is the second verse also, continuing more about Lord Brahma. The way of presentation of the Vedic sounds is so bewildering that it directs the intel intelligence of the people to meaningless things like the heavenly kingdoms. The conditioned souls hover in dreams of such heavenly illusory pleasures, but actually they do not relish any tangible happiness in such planets. All right, why don't we relish any tangible happiness in these places? You know, we hear it's so nice there in the heavenly planets. It's, uh, there's a long life and everyone, the women are very beautiful and the men are very handsome and they're all intelligent and they have mystic powers and so many things are there, right? So, how can you say there's no happiness there? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, first of all it is very lumbersome process and second thing it is temporary. No, okay. Because old age, death, disease is present there also, the problems of life cannot be solved. Don't solve the problems of life, yes. What problems of life? Problems of life are solved there. No, I'm having a good time there. That's the problem I want to enjoy. So if I go there, I can enjoy. Birth, death, old age and disease. I, I thought people don't get old there. Do they get old? Yes, my Raj, but in a low, lower pace than us. I thought there's no disease there. They don't have cancer. They don't have all. Oh, they don't have COVID. They don't have these things there. There's no disease there. Maharaj, we cannot remember Krishna there. Only we are enjoying. No, they can remember Krishna. They're all working for the service of Krishna. They're all devote. They're demigods, right? They do. They have responsibilities in the universe, and they act on behalf of Krishna. They're Maharaj, actually demigods. Also, they want to come here in this material world. Well, they're in the material world, right? They're in the material world where they are. That that is the material world. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, but uh, even in the, that planet, in those planets also, higher planets also, they cannot be eternally blissful, eternal happiness, um, uh, eternal life. It's, it's not there. Yes, there's no eternal life. Eternality is not there. Yes. Krishna Yes. Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, 8th chapter, Krishna himself tells Arjuna, A Brahma Bhuvana Loka Punaravarti Arjuna. Mamupetta to Kamdeya Punar Janma Navidyate. So, 
Mm. Even though there is happiness in comparison to the earthly planets, it is higher there. But still, there is no eternality of the mm. uh, service that can be rendered by the jiva. That is why the tangible happiness in such places is not existing. Okay. There is no. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, in in one of the uh, commentary, Srila uh, Rupa Goswami has mentioned that uh, the happiness of this three worlds can be compared to a drop of water and then happiness in the Brahman realization can be compared with a, uh, the water that can be accumulated in the hoof of a calf, uh, calf's hoof print and then happiness that we get through Krishna consciousness is like the ever-increasing ocean of bliss. So that is another point that uh, this happiness compared to one drop of water uh, compared to an ocean is very small and our actual uh, eternal position is to get that happiness by reconnecting with Krishna. So we will be considered as a Kripana if we are focusing on that happiness. No. Okay, so their happiness is not as great as the happiness which is there in the spiritual world. Okay. Uh, it, it's like um, going to your parents' house where you feel peaceful and happy and protected and sheltered. You may go around different places, go to your uncle's place, aunt's place, friend's place, but ultimately you will always hanker to go back to your parents. So it's something like that. You may enjoy for some time, but then you cannot live with your uncle for eternity, but definitely you can stay with your parents. So Krishna is a Supreme Father, so that bliss can be experienced only with him. Oh, okay. So you have a, a strong desire to go back to Krishna. Okay, heavenly planets certainly can be very bewildering. They can offer a lot of sense gratification. But as you say, it's temporary, it's not eternal. And from time to time, they also have their problems in the heavenly planets. The demons come, conquer the heavenly planets sometimes. They always have to be worried about that, that the demons are going to come and threaten them. Okay, as a fish out of water. The fish out of water is never happy. Doesn't matter where he is. But, in the, so in the same way, uh, we, our position in the material world is something like a fish out of water. That there's no real happiness for us here in the material world. Well, there's happiness, but it's very temporary, it's illusory happiness, the happiness of the senses. But our natural position is to be in the spiritual world. All right, so that's the first two verses. Going ahead, Sukadeva Goswami is going to speak about the world of names. He wants to encourage Maharaj Parikshit in his renunciation. So the third verse, For this reason the enlightened person should endeavour only for the minimum necessities of life while in the world of names. He should be intelligently fixed and never endeavour for unwanted things being competent to perceive practically that all such endeavours are merely hard labour for nothing. So minimum necessities, this is uh, something we're always challenged in. We live in a very consumer orientated society and we, you know, we enjoy so much to go shopping to go to the stores, to go to the malls and to purchase so many things. 
you go to people's homes and we see how much we accumulate. Uh, one devotee I know, he went to the Middle East and he stayed there for quite some years, of course, and he was a single man when he first went there. In the course of time, he got married and had a couple of children. And then came time for him to retire and move back. So he told me, he said he came there to the Middle East, he had one bag. But now he's going back. He had more than a container. <laughs> you know, you fill a container with things. You have so many things. This is the, 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 the problem we face. So min we have to think about what, are, what is the minimum necessities. And Sukadeva Goswami is going to point out to Maharaj Parikshit that you don't have to worry about accumulating so many things, right? Everything is provided by nature, right? Isn't it? What examples does Sukadeva Goswami give? He says the sky is the shelter, so why do you need a house for yourself? Um, the barks of the trees, the leaves of the trees are there, so why do you need clothing? And the Uma Devi is like the place, so like that he gives examples. Yes, we can say, uh, yes, Prabhu, yeah. go ahead, Prabhu. He, he also says that there are many caves uh, to take shelter. Then he also says that um, there are uh, uh, the different fruits and with, means for, for uh, taking our food or meal. And then there are plenty of water in the river. Mm -hmm. To quench our thirst. Mm -hmm. and these are arms, things. why do you need pillows? Yes, yeah. right. Arms. arms, you don't need pillows. Then, uh, yeah, arms skin. Yeah. What? Skin arms and of, when you have palm, uh, your palm as a utensil, why do you want to buy things? Your palm can be the vessels. I'm sorry, your voice is not clear, Mataji. Yeah, I'm not, not able to understand what you're saying. Hare Krishna, when you have your palms as utensils, why do you want to buy things? Oh, okay. Yeah, when you have your hands, your palms, you don't need items. You can just use your hands to do everything. You don't need so many things. All right. And we don't need a bed either, right? Why not? Because yeah. your arms are the pillows. Yeah, the, arms the earthly flag is the bed. There, the ground the earth is like lay, a bed. lay down on the bed, on the earth, right? The earth is flat, right? Where we, the earth is flat, you can lay down on the, on the earth. You don't need a bed. And you need, are there no torn clothes on the road? <laughs> you can get torn clothes to cover your body. And you can get also the, the bark from the tree like Lord Rama, when he went into the forest in exile, they were wearing tree bark. Oh, so these are like <laughs> extreme examples, of course. Uh, in this day and age, hardly we see a tree with fruits. If there is fruits, then it's, it's someone's property. You don't find fr uh, too many trees naturally growing wild, giving fruits. It's not common. And water, the water's all polluted everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you lay down somewhere to take rest, you'll be charged as being a vagrant or a tramp. You'll be arrested. You can't, they'll say, you cannot sleep here. Why are you laying here? Get up. And so many, <laughs> so very difficult to follow Sukadeva Goswami's lifestyle. Uh, in, in certain parts of the world. Maybe in some parts of the world it may be possible. But in general, most parts of the world it's not possible. But anyway, the idea is to minimize our demands and uh, try to restrain ourselves from over, over collecting, as it's described, right? In Nectar of Instruction, Atyahara. So we collect so many unwanted things. Sometimes you go in people's home, you go into a lady's room and, and my goodness, there's so many shoes there. It's like you're in a shoe shop. 
<laughs> it's got so many shoes, you know, how many shoes? How many bags? How many handbags do they need? How many shoes? So many things. But Srila Prabhupada also, he said, he said the average woman would, would not be happy unless she has at least 30 saris. Is that, that's reason, a reasonable number, right? 30. And we may think, oh, so many, but no, that's average. Okay, so Sukadeva Goswami describes the path of renunciation, verses number 3 to 7. You're all seeing the PowerPoint okay, is it? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. All right. So here's the, the summary of some of the points from this section. Would someone like to read them one after another? Yeah, go ahead. World of Names, Summary of Srila Prabhupada's 2.2.4 the Bhagavata Dharma or the cult of Srimad Bhagavatam is perfectly distinct from the way of fruitive activities. All material existence is moving on it or as Jagat simply for planning business to make one's position very comfortable or secure. Everyone sees that this existence is neither comfortable nor secure and can never become comfortable or secure at any stage of development. The whole material creation is a jugglery of names only. In fact, it is nothing but a bewildering creation of matter like earth, water and fire. Therefore, a devotee is not interested in creating unwanted things for a situation which is not at all reality, but simply names of no more significance than the babble of sea waves. Mm. No more significant than the babble of sea waves. <laughs> okay, so Prabhupada's interesting way of describing the material world. So many names. Uh, so Bhagavad Dharma is very different from the cult, from the way of fruitive activities. Bhagavad Dharma meaning following the principles as endorsed in the Srimad Bhagavatam is not like the way of fruit of activities which is all based on sense gratification, material life centered around the senses and satisfying our senses. As Prabhupada continues, he said, if people want to make their life more comfortable or secure, but that's the illusion that they can never be comfortable, they'll never be secure. The material world does not provide that opportunity. So, don't be bewildered by the material world. Okay, here's some more points about the world of names. Someone read. Hare Krishna, a devotee realizes how much history and historical persons are useless products of flickering time. The fruity workers, worker aspires after a big fortune in the matter of wealth, woman and worldly adoration. Those who are fixed in perfect reality are not at all interested in such false things. For them, it is all waste of time. Since every second of human life is important, an enlightened man should be very careful to utilize time very cautiously. The transcendentalist is warned herewith not to be captivated by the external features of routine actors. Human life is never meant for sense gratification, but for the self-realization. Srimad Bhagavatam instructs us solely on this subject from the very beginning to the end. Thanks. Thank you. So Prabhupada begins talking about how history and historical persons are all useless products of flickering time. Great men in history, how they set out to conquer the world, but they were all defeated by time. They all met their death in the hands of the material energy. And so that's the nature of their their, their fame, their big name, their, what seems like success. And they just ended up 
where did they go in the next life? We don't like to think. So history records about so many great men, but history does not tell us where they are now, what they're doing now. That's the defect of history. So fruit of worker, meaning karmis, then they're, they're thinking about sense gratification. And it comes in these things, money and the opposite sex and name and fame. Those who are actually serious about spiritual life, they know this is all just a waste of time. They don't get entangled in the material world and trying to enjoy the world. But they understand there's a higher purpose behind the creation. So we want to utilize time very cautiously, very carefully. That's an important aspect of devotional service. Don't waste time. And we want to understand the, the, the futility of sense gratification. So the Srimad Bhagavatam is telling us about this. From the beginning to the end, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. It's a very strong message against materialistic life. Okay, there's this one more section here because Prabhupada did write a lot. He gave us a lot of points on this. So we picked out some of the main points from these verses. Someone please read this one now. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yes, Maharaj go ahead. Hare Krishna. The civilization which aims at the utmost perfection never indulges in creating unwanted things or to follow the principle of the best use of a bad bargain. Spiritual advancement of the living entity is absolutely necessary. One should accept only the bare necessities of life and depend more on God's gift without diversion of human energy for any other purpose. The materialistic advancement of civilization is called the civilization of the demons, which ultimately ends in wars and scarcity. The transcendentalist is wont to be fixed in mind so that even if there is difficulty in plain living, and high thinking, he will not budge even an inch from his top determination. It is the duty of a transcendentalist to help persons who desire real salvation and to support the cause of salvation. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So Prabhupada talks about the best use of a bad bargain, right? The ba What's a bad bargain? This body much. Okay. So what's the best use of it then? Use the same body to go back to him by practice of devotee service. Okay, so we don't waste our time in creating unwanted things. We want to achieve the real perfection of life, not just to create so many unwanted things. So spiritual advancement is very important. We should accept only the bare necessities, again minimizing and demand, depend on God's gift, and then Prabhupada talks about the materialistic civilization as the civilization of the demons. Hmm. Or sometimes Prabhupada talk about barking dogs, just like dogs. When put dogs together, they will simply fight with each other. So similarly, in the demonic civilization, it ends up in wars and scarcity. Although so much is provided, nature is given so many natural resources, the gifts of nature are abundant, but there never seems to be enough. So this is the problem in materialistic life. So we are encouraged to practice even though it may be difficult, practice plain living and high thinking. It may appear to be difficult, but if you do it, you get a lot of benefit. And this is the real duty of a devotee. Okay, so we ask you now, 
Reflect on your own experience. Consider how the Lord made arrangements for your maintenance. Certainly, Krishna has provided for all of us, right? We're all depending on Krishna ultimately. So he's made arrangements for our maintenance, just like myself, I'm here in this foreign country, I'm here in India, and I'm, I, have no, I have no money, I have no home, but still Krishna has made arrangements for my maintenance. I, I, I get my food, I have a place to stay, he gives me the opportunity to engage myself in some practical activities. Would someone else like to reflect on their own experience? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. The thought which came to my mind is that you know, throughout our life we, we had many difficulties. There were many ups and downs, disturbing situation, changing of jobs. But never was there a time when the basic necessities were not good. You always had the basic necessities. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. The basic necessities were always fulfilled for the living. The food, water, clothes were always done. Yes. Yeah, we may have to simplify a little or minimize a little, but generally, you know, we, we somehow managed to make ends meet, right? <laughs> By the grace of Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, the Lord Pranam. Uh, one incident that come to my mind is when I was very small, at that point in time there was very difficult times in, uh, during my childhood. But uh, when I look back, I feel that during those difficult times, uh, from all aspects, from economic situation, from other uh, situations, but uh, means now when I reflect and think that it was only Krishna who has uh, saved us and protected us, there was no other uh, uh, factor there. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yes. One country which I visit is Malaysia. And so I was asking the people in Malaysia, I was saying, you know, since our movement began, when the devotees first went there, of course that was very early, it was in like maybe early 1970s. And uh, then I was there, it was 2010 or more. And so, how much the country has changed in that time. You know, over 40 years, the country changed so much. There have been so many changes in the country. And of course, they all agreed, yeah, big changes, so many, so different. I said, are people happier now than they were before? And they all agreed, no. The, just simply, the what we think is economic development and building roads and people getting cars, motor cars and having houses and apartments and so on. Does it make people happy? It doesn't make any difference to them. They don't, they don't feel, sometimes they feel more, more disappointed and more frustration than they did when they were living more basically, more simply. Do you agree? Yes, Maharaj. Actually, uh, means if I see when I was even smaller, um, younger, at that point in time, though the people had lesser money in India, and they used to live a very lower middle class or middle class kind of a lifestyle, but people had a lot of uh, happiness and they were together and they, they, they had more peaceful life and they were also inclined towards spirituality little more. 
But now, when people have plenty, even in India, and they are uh, copying more and more the Western lifestyle and everything, now people are more stressed and there are more suicides, there are more mental uh, difficulties, challenges, psychological problems. So this is a like proof that I can see in the last 40 years. Mm, thank you. Yes. Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, I, 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 first time when I came to Dubai around 20, 29 years back, Dubai had only three hospitals. Now we got more than 50 hospitals. So this shows, you know, people are more miserable than the early olden days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. You know, when I first went to Dubai, I, I came to Dubai, it was uh, 19, uh, like 78, I think, I came there in Dubai. And so at that time, med medicine, everything was free. You know, you, if you got sick, you could go there and they gave you medicine, they gave you everything free. You, you didn't pay for anything. They were very... Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Maharaj, okay. you are audible. And, yeah. and on that point, Maharaj, actually, uh, I think just last four or five years back also, government hospitals used to uh, be free, free of charge. It is very recent that they have also started to charge now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> nothing free. <laughs> Yeah, but, but we just went through a load shedding. There was a problem with the power this morning and it's just gone off again. So I was worried that my voice was not there. But you can hear me okay? Very clear, Maharaj. Okay. Okay. All right. So certainly we depend, it's better that to see, see the Lord's arrangements for our maintenance there, how He's providing for us. We just have to use things in the proper way. We don't want to be extravagant and we don't want to be wasteful. That's important. So try to minimize the demands and just use what we need without taking more. Like the words of Ishopanishad, right? Ishavashyamidam sarvam. Right? We're entitled to our quota, but don't take more than what you need. So our quota, just like quota, we, our quota is not meat, fish and eggs. Our quota is actually the grains and the fruit and the vegetables which are provided by nature. That's our real quota. So we're given enough land to lay down on. <laughs> we don't need to have a huge, big estate. We just need minimum demands. Okay, oh, let's see. Okay, oh, this is, this is a little exercise for you, just to give you something to preach about. Let's see, we want to make three groups, right? Can we, is, is someone here to, how many people do we have? 24. Yeah, 24, Maharaj. 24, so, that, so we can have six groups of four people in each group, right? Six groups. And there will be two groups of Jagannath and two groups of Baladev and two groups of Subhadra. So, group, the first group, Jagannath group, will do verses three and four. And we want you to talk about Bhagavad Dharma as an alternative lifestyle and you're being interviewed by a Lifestyle magazine reporter. A Lifestyle magazine reporter has come to interview you about Bhagavad Dharma and how this is, this is the Bhagavad Dharma is an alternative lifestyle from the materialistic way of life. So we want to hear how you will present it. And then the Baladev group, you have to talk about Householder and sannyasi's duties to the congregation. What is the duty of the sannyasi and the duty of the householders as we would speak to the congregation? And Subhadra group, the how we want you to explain to the materialists how Krishna arranges the maintenance of a devotee. 
how will you present that to a materialistic person? So, Subhadra group, you're working with verse 6, and Baladev group, verse 5, and then the Jagannath group, verse 3 and 4. So, uh, is somebody there to put people into groups? Can we do that? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. For, for how long we have to keep the groups on, Maharaj? Oh, just like five minutes. Five minutes and then we'll come back and we'll discuss what each group, what you each came up with, how you're going to present this. Okay, Maharaj. All right. So which, which group is this? As group two. So we are in. Mm hmm. You are group two. Group two. What's that? But you you be put in one of the groups because you're it's a computer in the in the future. Mm hmm. Before you also put all the groups by the computers. Okay. Because it's here in our group actually, next to you. So what's the what's the subject you're doing? Subject is a we are we are the group two, Baldev group, householder and sannyasis. Okay, householder and sannyasis. Sometimes we get conflict, you know. <laughs> Sometimes the, the householders will complain about the sannyasis, and the sannyasis will complain about the householders. Uh, we can talk about also the sannyasi part. We can uh, give some realizations. <laughs> that experience, and also that uh, Jivesha Prabhu also can contribute. Being a brahmacharya, how can you? Or the householder's uh, life is unless. Brahmaji life is more safer than householder's life. In our preaching and place, we are also facing some problems. Because in my place, I am doing the congressional preaching as well as the youth preaching also. So as a youth preaching, uh, we keep away from uh, Mataji and um, girls, no? Some, uh, so that is, uh, we follow the boys also follow that rule and regulation. My myself also follow the rule and regulation. And in the congressional preaching, sometimes in the, uh, now and days we are in the Buddhist session. Uh, last month we are the modern work program. In that time, the program and arrangement of different times we are associated with Mataji also. Uh, but sometimes criticize also some people. The Prabhuji uh, more time discussed or something, someone or some type of problem actually my, myself also facing. So I try to understood that actually for preaching purpose, those who are actually expert and eager to do the service, then I have to engage them more time. Uh, so actually par particularly I'm not give to attention to someone, but those who are interested so let me that time give the time. So that time, sometimes I also face the problem. What problem? The problem is that sometimes I suppose uh, in the service time I discuss with some Mataji also. So some then the uh, devotees uh, told me that. Prabhuji, directly, not directly, indirectly, the Prabhuji give more time with uh, some Mataji or some, someone that that. But they are not interested to do service. They are not uh, come forward for some seva or something. So those who are coming, I give the seva. There's a last, uh, uh, yesterday also, 
in the book decision in the root side somewhere in the city the 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 boys are not there or the dance people devotees are not there so immediately i call some mata ji also that we are free in the evening time well uh, oh yeah i am free and i immediately call to them they come uh, we are uh, installed in the uh, root side so please help us for distribution the books the that type of problem then later i have created there only one boy and two three mata ji uh, distribute those and people are observed that who give more more importance to some mata ji actually problem is here that you are not coming you are busy but mata ji are interested to do service how can i handle it so immediately i went that that and later they are discussing uh, that type of thing and many times i have seen the problem is here yeah. So, how to address this to the congregation? How are you going now to? Now I focus. Now I focus to uh, make some senior uh, devotees, uh, especially dance uh, devotees, so that I uh, do not direct contact to Mataji uh, in media, in middle place. I keep some prabodhi. And directly not contact with some other. Show some probity. I will handle all the charges. And that is my plan actually. I don't know if that is exactly or not. Uh, can you also advise me some tips? How can I handle that thing? What do you suggest, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. In fact, we are grasta, so as a duty to congregation, and we feel you know it's very much, very well placed uh, being a grasta to preach in a congregation, and uh, because majority you can say almost all you know grasta so here, so you got a lot of responsibility actually. It's a wonderful opportunity being a grasta family is there and you can approach easily other person and you can make it convenient. You know. Being a grasta also you can uh, continue the Krishna Mahacharya activities. And it is a wonderful. Uh, we can conduct various programs. We can invite so many devotees. You know, that's what we are doing here in Dubai in congregation. Chant, congregation, you know, various congregations, small small congregations are there. Every weekend they get together. You know, we do the uh, preaching. Plus, we do the online classes also. It's a good opportunity for the grass. Actually, it's a wonderful opportunity. We feel you know, we have a lot of responsibility for uh, discharge our uh, duties. It's very important. You know, we carry on the proper mission, and we are the well place you know, because we are running also. We can take care of the sannyasis also. We can take care of the brahmacharis. You know, whenever comes, you know, devotee comes to Dubai, you know, this all the wonderful opportunity given to the grasses. This is what I feel proud of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in the case of the in the case of the brahmachari, I think the brahmacharis they should like take care of the brahmacharis. They shouldn't have to take care of the the matajis. You know, let the grihastas take care of the ladies. You see. The brahmacharis, they can be independent, separate, you know. Brahmachari work with the brahmacharis. And the matajis, they can be working with the grihastas. Mahada, actually, you know, I'm preaching the one of the district, Walpur Center, Santi Niketa. In here, I am the only brahmachari. And supporting one of the brahmacharis. Right now, I'm the only one. Uh, so i have to handle the all the students and the viewers also uh, this is a very new center so i have to do uh, connect to all of the them so uh, all the seva connect to some prabhuji also mataji also well you should always have somebody with you you should always have a man with you you should never be alone you need another and some of the devotees is there now some student is in our center uh, where cook is there uh, is a set from devotees only i but others are, are some other uh, boys also some supporting devotees also. somebody should be there to be with you you should have some association ideally he should also be in saffron but the, the devotees are very late i request to them uh, 
In fact, Maharaj, one more point I would just like to highlight. Being a household trouser, we don't approach the market directly. Normally, I tell my my Sugopi, she's the outside down. And she's on approaching the other side. So we normally approach the you know, male, male population. So we always concentrate on the Prabhuji's and we cut to come and say, Mataji takes care of the Mataji section. Uh-huh. So this is what he thinks actually. Okay, Nadosh, Shruti, what do you say? It is a bachelor. Sorry, one is from the background. One is my mother and father also attending. So, tell me if it's so. I don't know one is because I'm neither of both. So, uh, I can only tell from Prabhupada's purport what both. Uh, season, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, you're young, young woman. Okay. What about uh, other marriage here? Is it Ranga Devi? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandrat Pranams. Yeah, uh, being in the congregation uh, uh, for the grihasthas, like mainly for the uh, matajis, it is very easy to take care of the children, children classes also. Uh, to grow up the children from the beginning. It's very easy to approach the new devotees who comes uh, like in, in the contact. Uh, that's what I feel, uh, Maharaj. It's, uh, being in the Grahastas, uh, Matajis, they can even uh, guide the small children also so that they can become a very good devotees. Yes. yes. What about your relationship with the sannyasis? Uh, uh, with the sannyasis, we have to see them as as our uh, uh, father respect, we have to give them. And then direct service, we should not do the sannyasis. Uh, that's what I feel. Like, uh, we can cook for them, but uh, serving them and all, we can uh, give it to our Prabhujis, like, you know, who can do the direct service for the sannyas. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes, there has to be cooperation between the sannyasi and the grihastas. The sannyasis come and they will preach and inspire others and the grihastas they encourage the sannyasis they facilitate them they help them they provide them some prasadam and they give them place to stay and they may even arrange their transportation to next place and they give them arrange programs for them to preach so there should be mutual respect between the two we shouldn't, you know, there shouldn't be any conflict. It's not like the sannyasis come to criticize or condemn the householders. And the same way householders also will not condemn the sannyasis. But there should be mutual respect and they should work together to help spread Krishna consciousness. That's what I think. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Okay. Maharaj, can we close the rooms now? Yes, close the rooms now. Let's get everyone back and hear what's going on. Recording in progress. Okay, Hare Krishna. <coughs> So who was in the who was in the Jagannath group, the first group? How were you preaching to the li- the alternative lifestyle magazine reporter? Yes? Who was in that Hare group? Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Jagannath group, uh, we were there. Uh, myself Sachi Yashoda. Then we had Ravindra Prabhu. Mamata Mata and Bhagwan Balabhadra Prabhu. We, are, we were one team. So now um, it will be from our side. Uh, Mamata Mata and Ravindra Prabhu will be presenting, and if some points, then I'll step in, but I request them to take it. Okay. Yeah. Ravindra but... Prabhu and Mamata, please go ahead. Mm-hmm. Hare Krishna, I'm the reporter. So, okay, Mr. Ravindra, I have a question for you. You ISKCON people always chant and don't even bother to make money or worry about the basic necessities. How do you even forget to make any uh, or make uh, make your living or being comfortable in life first? Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji. 
Thanks for asking that question. Uh, first of all, we should know what is our goal of life. Normally, in today's condition, we don't know, first of all, what is our destination, where we are heading towards. towards. Um, and second thing, everything, even an animal like dogs or cats, they can also have a living. They also, they also have uh, how to live. They also know how to have uh, uh, food, clothing, everything, you know, like food and other things. But here, we, in human form of life, we are being given the intelligence. So we should think of the higher reason and use our intelligence. That's how the Bhagavata Dharma talks about all those things. See, today we have so many things like buildings, furnitures, cars, bungalows, and so many things. Um, but we are, are we happy? We are not happy. The more we hanker for material things, that's what we are doing in the current things, current situation. We are hankering for more and more. We get something, but we, we, just, we are not uh, satisfied with that. We, we hanker for more and more. The more and more we get, the more and more distressed we are. But same thing if, if we talk, if we take the uh, principles of Bhagavad, Bhagavad, uh, Shrimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Dharma, it talks about uh, simple living and high thinking. So simple living means basic necessities we follow, then the distress are less, isn't it? We don't have, we don't worry too much or we, we are not always in distress. The more we, like example is the gadgets. Uh, even if you take a simple mobile phone, uh, we, uh, you know, we try to use it more and more. Now today's condition is that doctors are, are uh, the scientists are telling that it creates too much of health problems. The more and more we get, you know, entangled in th th these things, the more and more distressed we are. Hare Krishna. But Mr. Ravindra, if you see the developed countries are already giving all of this. How do you justify that? Sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't understand. Sorry. But if you see, the developed countries are already giving these things as a basic necessity. So how do you justify that? that that's what uh, we can see the examples of the developed countries itself. The more they have got, the more they are suffering. We go to, go to America, any place. I've been to recently to Europe. When you go there, the people are more distressed than even in Dubai. They are always, they are, they are giving me their CVs. They are telling that, please look for a job there. So we, the more and more we go into this type of complicated things, the more and more distressed we will be. Hare Krishna. Okay, very, very good. Very nice. Thank you so much. Very nice presentation. Very good answers, everything. All right, let's go to the next group. Uh, can we go to, actually, can we go to the third group about how Krishna provides for everyone's maintenance? Who is doing that? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Ranavat Pranam. Uh, it is our group, myself, uh, Shalini Mataji, and Tithanga Nitai Prabhu, and Deveshwari. Uh, uh, we four are in one group. So, how Krishna provides maintenance, <clears throat> as Krishna promises in Bhagavad Gita 9.22, Ananyas Chintayanto Maam, Ye Jana Parivasate, Desham Nitya Bhyuktanam, Yoga Kshemam Baham Yaham. So, Krishna promised that. Uh, all the requirements that a devotee uh, need in his life will be provided by him, personally will be provided by him. And uh, the same thing in this verse also, uh, we see that Srila Shukadev Goswami was completely living by the mercy of the Lord. And uh, he is preaching the same message to Srila Parikshit Maharaj for uh, going back home, back to Godhead. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada also mentions that uh, in the purport that Krishna as Paramatma will take care of everyone's need and uh, we should have strong faith. And this is how a, a person, when he takes up sannyasa, he completely lives on the mercy of the Lord and uh, uh, all his necessities are provided. Some of the examples that we see uh, in practical life, how it has been provided, uh, of course, one example is Srila Shukadeva Goswami, but in recent time, uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, when he left everything, uh, his, his uh, householder life, uh, and then he has shared many of his life stories, how Krishna has provided everything that he required when he went to US and he did not have anything at that point in time, how Krishna protected. And in such a few lectures, he even cried, uh, remembering those days. Similarly, all the uh, staunch devotee of Srila Prabhupada, like uh, your, your good self Maharaj 
and all uh, Srila Prabhupada's other uh, disciples, uh, uh, all the senior Maharaj and even Brahmacharis, they live a free. All the material opulence they have, they leave and then they come and join and it's gone empty handed. And that is the strong, strong faith on Srila Prabhupada's and Srimad Bhagavatam's word. And as you are sharing today, that after 40 and 50 years of your uh, uh, Krishna conscious life, how Krishna is still providing everything that you require, the basic necessities, and you are so happy. You are the most happiest among all of us who are living in this materialistic life with all the necessities and uh, accumulating more and more. You have the least thing you told, you don't have a house, you don't have a bank account, but actually you have the, uh, the largest bank account in this whole world and in this whole universe. So this is what we see from Srila Prabhupada and his strong uh, followers. And uh, then um, I'll, I'll just uh, tell Deveshwari will share one more story in this regard and then we'll conclude. Hare Krishna Pranams Maharaj. Um, so uh, Maharaj, I, uh, I happened to listen to a lecture by Hari Lila Prabhu and uh, actually he was a resident of Dubai and uh, his family were very, uh, all the members were uh, very sincere devotees and they were trying to raise their child in a Krishna conscious environment. But at the same time, they were getting frustrated with the materialistic life. And one day it so happened that the child came and asked uh, Mataji, his mother, that I have to write an essay on a cricketer. And Mataji got really frustrated and she said, this is not the way we can uh, make our child Krishna conscious. So they left, they winded up everything and they went to Mayapur and Prabhuji is a teacher in Mayapur Institute. So he was relating that now he's directly engaged in the service of Lord Sri Krishna. And now people call him in different places uh, to give lectures and to teach uh, uh, on Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And now it is like uh, they arrange, the tickets are arranged for him, the, uh, the place he stays, or uh, everything is arranged by Lord Krishna. And even the prashadam, what prashadam he likes, and he gets more variety of prashadam now than before when he was here. So uh, we can see that uh, you know devotees are directly taken care by Lord Krishna. So that is I wanted to share my rights. Hare Krishna. Okay. <laughs> so a good prashadam in his corner. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's go back to the the second group, the con the preaching to the congregation about the relationship between Grihastas and sannyasis. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Perhaps in Hi. our group we have uh, Raghunandan Prabhuji, Kirtan and Itai Prabhuji, Dhinu Dhamudan Prabhuji and myself. So uh, we will speak about the duties of householder and renounced order of life. Nowadays we are seeing on the streets many renounced people who are wearing torn clothes, who are begging for arms, who pose themselves as sannyasis and who claim to be supported by the grihasthas. So how should we differentiate the real sannyasi from the fake ones? So Vedic scriptures are always given as a point. So what we should see, renounced order of life is never meant for begging uh, uh, for living at the cost of others. They should not beg for food. Why they are doing that? To uplift the householder. The only purpose is that to uplift the householder, to purify them with their association. So with that, we can find out. And then the second duty is that they should work for the benefit of human being. This is the most important point because nowadays, most of the people, they are frustrated with the family life. They do not want to take the burden. They do not want to take the responsibilities. So they quit their homes, go out to the streets, they live, simply live on arms. There is no difference between a beggar and them. But they force themselves to be renowned sannyasis and they enjoy all the opulence at the cost of others, living like a parasite. So that is what Srila Prabhupada said, renounce, real renunciants do not live like a parasite. They do not depend on any of the householder's earnings. They are fully convinced that the Supreme Lord will take care of them. They have full faith in the Lord. They are fearless to live alone and they are always working for the benefit of the society. They should contribute. That is what is the most important point. The real renunciants will contribute in the form of literary works, just like how our Goswamis did. And each and every moment, they would not waste their time in sleeping or in mundane talks or in no, enjoying the opulence. They, they go to each and every householder and, and do discourses 
on the Lord's uh, pastimes, on the Lord's glories. That is their important duty. These are the two important duties to present literary works and to conduct discourses wholly and solely on bringing spiritual progress for the householders. If these two are not present, then they are not to be taken as real pronunciation. An excellent example is given uh, the pastime of Srila Haridas Thakura, sorry, Haridas Thakura, and uh, also about the Goswamis, how they lived. They do not live on the same tree twice. Two days together, they do not live. They are real renunciants because they are really concerned about the welfare of the society. On the other hand, if you take the householders, what is their duty? Their duty is, Srila Rupa Goswami gave, 50% of the income should be donated for the spiritual pro progress or spiritual purpose, 25 for the family members and 25 for immediate emergencies. It is their responsibility to take care of the renunciants. When the renunciants come to their home, they should analyze whether they are real or fake. And if they are real, they should take care of their maintenance. It is their responsibility. So in that way, they should do it. And as a whole family, they should respect and treat the renunciants as their own family member and provide for them. And uh, uh, a real uh, householders can accumulate wealth but it is not uh, with the with the motivation to enjoy the luxuries, but to provide for their immediate family members. So in for that purpose, they are uh, they have to earn and they have to accumulate spiritual assets, not uh, material assets. That is what is said in Bhagavad Gita 16.5. So they have to uh, uh, they have to accumulate daily sampad, not just the material uh, assets or the asuri sampad. So that also should be there. And then everyone can be fearless, both all any order, any social order, they can be fearless and honest if their existence is purified by discharging proper devotional service. So uh, our main duty is to hear from the oral reception of those sannyasis and practice it in our life after assimilating it. That is the main duty of the householder. So two important duties of renounced order and one main important duty of a householder. This is what is our summary. Any additional points? I call upon my team members to speak on my behalf. And, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Mm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Th thank you very people. much. Very nice. Very powerful. <laughs> uh, do we have any comments from anyone on this? Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, myself, Gop Kumar Prabhu and Paramakutta Prabhu and Susimi Kamataji were in the Baldeva group only. So, uh, in addition to what uh, Shubhangi Mataji has said, so I just wanted to add some points in that. Uh, uh, in the same group, like sannyasi is responsibility. So, when a person become willfully become a sannyasi, he should have a you know complete faith on the supreme personality of Godhead because uh, a common ma master looks after the necessity of the servant the same way the much powerful and opulent supreme lord can you know take care of the surrendered souls without any uh, you know doubt so that uh, faith we should have and uh, the uh, you know uh, the uh, the sannyasis Actually, Mataji has already said that it is actually his responsibility is to give Vedic literature to the people and also, you know, uh, uh, distribute wealth if he has, like uh, uh, Sri Rupa Goswami and Sanatha Goswami did it. And uh, Haridas Thakur's example is that he is completely depending on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And also, the Dhrasa's responsibility is to take care of uh, three ashramas, that is, Brahmacharya and uh, uh, Vanaprastha and Sanyasi. This is the responsibility of the Grihastha. Yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, it's true. That's an important point, that the Grihasthas are supporting the other ashrams. So it's important also that the other ashrams, that they don't take advantage of that, that they minimize their needs. So there has to be that cooperation, that while the Grihasthas are donating and giving for the maintenance of the other ashrams. The other ashrams, they have to be careful not to burden the grihastas too much, right? So, and, that, and when, the griha, when the grihastas see that the brahmacharis and sannyasis and vandam, that they're doing that, that they're minimizing their needs, living simply and not being extravagant, 
And then the grihasthas are happy to give, then they don't mind to maintain. But if they see extravagance, then, they, then it disturbs their faith. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, just Maharaj, one point on that uh, renunciate or sannyasis when they come to our home. Yeah, I had one experience like uh, in Bombay. We have many such sannyasis who come home ask, begging for arms. But the way they impress us is by they have this mystic power and they can just look at our face and tell you are this and you are that. Yes, and they can tell in details. So, how do we. Um, should how can we test him on this spot right because he's showing his power like he can just um, uh, predict or he can tell our future so should we um, how do we analyze this like should we treat him as a um, good sannyasi or there is some why does he show the power so that's what i was just thinking about well that's material power right they can tell you something about your past or they can tell you your future materially but they don't necessarily pre predict your spiritual position and so that's the real power to bring you back to godhead to take you back to the spiritual world and so they have some power but it's material power So you want to you want to help you want to encourage them with their material predictions with their material way of living. The real as we said the real purpose of sannyas a sannyasi who works is he is obligated he's not attached to enjoying the fruit he's sannyasi he's renounced so he's renounced from the results of work. So you're not obliged. <laughs> Generally, the, 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 feel, the, the, the mood is uh, sannyasi comes, you give him some food. Sadhu aya kanalau fir bolo jau. Right? Something like that. You know, you give him the food and then tell him to go. You don't have a, you don't have a duty really to these people. Uh, the doubt was only Prabhuji um, Maharaj because he asked for money, right? So if we not give money, you know, uh, kind of will he curse us? You know, that was the only fear factor we have at that point. Well, then it's up to you. You may give some small money. You can give some small donation, you know. Anyway, he's coming begging, you know. So you're not obliged to give a lot of money. You're not obliged. You know? Why he wants money? What do you, He's a sannyasi, he's renounced, you know. So you can give some, you can give him his bus fare or something. <laughs> like that, generally. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so we'll go ahead, let's see where is our... Okay. Oh. How would you preach the principles of Bhagavad Dharma in a modern context? A modern context, you know, here's some two interesting personalities, you know, do they fit into the modern context? <laughs> Here on the right, you can see a typical gathering of devotees and an ISKCON devotee is presenting to them the principles of Bhagavad Dharma. Now, as we discussed, there are certain things which will encourage people, with certain things which will discourage them. For example, we don't want to encourage people that this is the real life, you know, this is real renunciation. You know, you just put ashes on the body and you grow the beard and hair as much as you like. So are we going to, how many, you know, that's not for everyone. That's not the modern context. Bhagavad Dharma, Krishna consciousness, has to be presented in the modern context, how people can apply it in their own life. And so, what kind of things do we want to bring to their attention? 
We did speak about minimizing the bodily demands. Well, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Many people in the modern context, they will agree that we overconsume. We, we use too much. We need to simplify our lives. So it's, it's good to present that to, a, in a, in a, in a, to an audience. Any other points we would, you think would be relevant to a, an audience in the modern context? Yes? Uh, Maharaj, uh, uh, I can remember the principle of Yukta Vairagya that Srila Rupa Goswami enunciates in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So instead of dry renunciation, what is required in modern context is utility is the principle. And everything should be utilized for the Lord's service rather than artificially renouncing. Mm -hmm. So can you give some example in your own life? For example, when, when we use uh, the microphone itself, uh, Prabhupada gives the example that even though it is material, when we utilize it in the Lord's service to preach His message, it becomes spiritualized and it is not any more material. So instead of renouncing and saying that, oh, we do not use gadgets or any technology, uh, we utilize everything for the purpose of Krishna consciousness. Okay, very good. Yes, Prabhupada used to say, we're not against the advancement of technology. We can use it all for Krishna. Just like we're using this uh, Wi-Fi and internet connections for Krishna consciousness, right? So, we're not against these things, but how we use them, that's important. Any other points? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Hare Krishna Maharaj, one of the, Maharaj, one of the points I remember, the modern, what is the main problem is nowadays everybody is going under depressions. So we can use that uh, Hare Krishna um, chanting meditations, we can uh, train them, we can get rid of that uh, depression part and uh, uplift them to the level of transcendental sound vibration and uh, solve their problems. Yes, depression. depression. <laughs> uh, very interesting you brought this up because uh, just yesterday I was speaking with a devotee and they were also telling me, uh, they, uh, they told me that they're suffering from depression. So the family were telling them, family members were saying, you do too much reading of books, you read these Bhagavatam all the time, and you do too much chanting, you should just concentrate on your work and on the business <laughs> and on the home. Don't do all this devotional activity. <laughs> she said, this the only thing I really want to do. All I really want to do is, is, is chant Hare Krishna and to read the Bhagavatam. But the family members, they wanted to give up that and to do the other things. <laughs> and they said the cause of the depression is you're doing too much, so give up the Bhagavatam. <laughs> so always difficult working with uh, people who are not so devotional. The so Bhagavad Dharma, we do want to encourage people in a spiritual life, that we need a balance. It can't just be all material, working all day and night. There should be a balance, a spiritual part of life, it shouldn't be neglected. So Bhagavad Dharma is an opportunity for people to balance that daily activities, a daily sadhana program, some reading and chanting and visiting to temples and even visiting sometimes to holy places, very beneficial, very helpful. All right? Anybody else has a comment on this? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, uh, the real duty of a transcendentalist is to help the persons who need uh, salvation, not just sit and you know, uh, take care of his own progress. The element of compassion that is missing in the former picture, whereas here our ISKCON sannyasis are very compassionate. Yes. They conduct extensive programs, not only for uplifting themselves, but they want to uplift each and everyone they meet in the real, genuine sense. Very good. Very good point. Thank you very much. Very nice. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, also 
also in the same point that Shubhangi Matini shared, uh, in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada also talks about the futility of Ashtanga Yoga and how it is meant only for selfish motives. But uh, whereas the Bhakti Yogi, he tries to engage in the uh, welfare activities uh, based on the purpose of the soul. All right. Yes, very good. Thank you. Very good, ladies. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, our principle should be not to think about our personal maintenance. Someone read, please. Ajita, the Supreme Lord, Krishna, he is maintaining everyone. Yoga, Kshima, Vaham, Yaham. And he will not maintain a person who has fully surrendered to him. No, how it can be? Suppose a gentleman is maintaining so many other children and he does not maintain his own children. Surely he does. Yes, surely he does, right? Go ahead, Manaji, keep reading. Therefore, our principle should be, we should not think about our personal maintenance. We should dedicate our life for Krishna and Krishna will take care. That should be the principle. Don't be harassed thinking always, how I shall maintain, how I shall be maintained. That is not the problem. Maintenance is no problem. Real problem is how we shall be fully surrendered to Krishna. That is wanted. Shrimad Bhagavatam 2.2.5, New York, 1975. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Prabhupada's point, very clear. And don't worry about our own personal maintenance. Problem is how to surrender. That is the problem. How we can fully surrender. So, yes, serving the Lord in the heart. Someone read? Hare Krishna. Thus being fixed, one must render service unto the super soul situated in one's heart by his omnipotency, because he is the almighty personality of Godhead, eternal and unlimited. He is the ultimate goal of life, and by worshipping him, one can end the cause of the conditional, conditioned state of existence. Hare Krishna. Yes. So, Sukadeva Goswami is bringing up about the super soul in the heart. He's not saying sit and meditate on the universal form now. He's saying render service unto the super soul in everyone's heart. So this is uh, the substance of this uh, second chapter, the concept of the super soul. By worshipping him, one can end the cause of conditional life. All right. Then text seven. Neglecting one's own self-interest. Someone read. Yeah, who, Hare Krishna, who else but the gross materialistics will neglect such transcendental thought and take to the non-permanent names only seeing the mass of people fallen in the river of suffering as the consequence of accruing the result of their own work. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.7 Right, the gross materialists, they won't do this. So those people who are gross materialists, they're absorbed in the, the non-permanent names, the temporary names of the material world. But what is the result of being absorbed in the temporary names? They fall in the river of material life suffering their karma so they're not happy so and then here the duty of the renounced person is was brought up this morning in our discussion the renounced order of life is never meant for begging or living at the cost of others as a parasite the first duty of a person in the renounced order of life is to contribute some literary work for the benefit of the human being in order to give him realized direction towards self-realization. So Sukadeva Goswami would go to householders in the morning to beg some milk, but his real purpose in going to them was to give them enlightenment, not that he just wanted to get some of their milk. 
So then we're directed to the super soul. Sukadeva Goswami is saying we should contemplate the Lord in the heart and he's going to describe the Lord. This uh, text number eight. Others conceive of the personality of Godhead. <coughs> Excuse me. Others conceive of the personality of Godhead residing within the body in the region of the heart and measuring only eight inches with four hands, carrying a lotus, a wheel of a chariot, a conch shell and a club, respectively. Okay, this is text number eight. Then you can read for yourself the description of the, of the other verses, how they describe the Lord, his dress and his beauty, his effulgence. <clears throat> so, Prabhupada's purports from 12 to text 12 to 14, uh, first of all, process of meditation is being recommended, but it's not to fix, to fix one's attention on something impersonal or void. The meditation should concentrate on the Supreme Person, either in his Virata Rup or in his Satchidananda Vigraha. So, where is the, Sat the Satchidananda Vigraha? Of course, that is referring to the, the Bhagwan feature or also the Super Soul. The Super Soul is also Satchidananda. Those who are too engrossed in sense gratification cannot be allowed to participate in archana or to touch the transcendental form of the Radha Krishna. For them, it is better to meditate upon the gigantic Virata Rup of the Lord. So Prabhupada discusses this point quite a bit about how Purity has to be there, just like the process of archana, offering arti, worship to the deities. You have to touch the deities, you have to touch the forms of the Lord. One should be Brahman, right? One should be initiated as a Brahman, twice initiated to actually worship the deities properly. And coming to that Brahminical initiation means that you've given up the path of sense gratification and you're strictly following the regulative principles. If you're not, if you're not strict in the regulative principles, then you may be better to meditate upon the Virata Rup of the Lord. But generally we encourage devotees, keep chanting and purify yourself because chanting the holy name will certainly purify us quicker than meditating on the Virata Rup. Similarly, they should restrict their study of Srimad Bhagavatam to the first two cantos. The first two cantos, that, that is the Padapadma. So you study the, without uh, purifying oneself, we're not qualified to go up to the tenth canto. Prabhupada is particularly pointing out that we don't want to jump up to the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam and to go immediately to the Rasalila section, but we want to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam systematically from the beginning. So the first two cantos are very, very important and very powerful. Actually, even the first canto, the very first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam Srila Prabhupada wrote it while he was still residing in India and at that time he was completely alone and penniless and he did not know if he'd ever get any money to write more. So he put so much of knowledge there into the first canto, so much information, so much very valuable philosophy is there in the first canto Srimad Bhagavatam because Prabhupada thought, I may never get the chance to present any more of the Bhagavatam. 
So he gave us so much mercy there in the first two cantos. Some way or other, one must try to re-establish one's forgotten relation with the Lord in order to gain real happiness in life. Without such meditation on God, either personal or impersonal, all good qualities of the human being become covered with misconceptions regarding his constitutional position. All right, are there any questions or comments on this? I just want to, uh, Maharaj, uh, just to have a small question here. Yeah? Here it is mentioned that the size of the uh, Paramatma is 8 inches, um, but again, on the other hand, we also hear that it is one is equal to one, what, 10,000 of the size, no tip of the hair, uh, tip of the hair. So how should we understand this, Maharaj? Well, what is described as being one ten thousandth of the tip of the hair, that's the soul, right? That's not the super soul. That's the individual soul. Right? Yeah, yeah, correct. But even then, this eight inches, uh, is it like... It looks but, according to that particular individual body which we have, you know, that you could say the super soul can adjust. <laughs> it, it particularly mentions the distance between the ring finger and the thumb as being, you know, about eight inches and so uh, it's going to, it's going to uh, vary, of course. The super soul is appearing in subtle form, spiritual form, it's not manifest, not to the materialist anyway. But we're given that size so that we can conceive the, how the Lord is present there. We want to understand his features, we want to contemplate the Lord. So we have to know something about him. So he appears like this. The dimensions are given to help us to just to conceive of him in a material sense. But of course the Lord is totally spiritual. The form of the Lord is spiritual. So, don't worry about it, we have to accept. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes? Uh, Maharaj, on the same verse, that is 2.8, uh, there is a description of the Shankha Chakra Gada Padma, but there is a mention of Rathanga, that is the wheel of a chariot. So, is there any particular reason, because usually we uh, describe the Lord as with having uh, Sudarshan Chakra. So, well, the wheel of the chariot, that is a, actually Sudarshan Chakra. That is what is being meant. Prabhupada just described it as being like a wheel of a chariot. But of course it's a chakra. He's referring to the Sudarshan Chakra. Thank you. All right. So achieving, going ahead next section, achieving the Supreme. This is the immediate process. You can immediately go this way back to Godhead. Instant liberation. For, for who? For the detached yogi. So Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti said that this is the process followed by the Bhakti Mishra yogi, who have no interest in seeing higher planets up to Brahmaloka. They're not attracted to go in any of the other higher planets. They're not tourists. You know, the tourists come, they go around and look at everything and go back. 
Prabhupada said about the spaceman who's supposed to went to the moon. And he said, they just go there and look and come back. He said, that is the enjoying mentality. So people have that, that enjoying mentality in yoga also. They want to go and visit the higher planets, spend some time there and go to Swarga Loka and enjoy there for some time and then go up to Mahar Loka and then Jana Loka and, and meet everybody and say hi and everything and then go on up to Satya Loka and be with Lord Brahma like that. And so that is the gradual process. But this yogi described here, the Bhakti Mishra yogi, is no interest to see these higher planets. He wants to go immediately. So here, here's the one, here's the tourist one, gradual elevation. Oh, wait, but maybe we should go, to, how does this, how do they do this? How do they achieve this? By devotion and yoga practice, astanga yoga, meditating on the super soul, the Lord in the heart, and then bringing the light bearer up from the different chakras, the muladhara chakra all the way up to the brahmarandra out the top of the head. And Prabhupada describes in the purport, oh, this is a great yogi if there's a hole in the skull where the, the soul goes out the top of the head because they, they bring the life force up to the top of the head, to between the eyebrows, and then they block the different gates, they block the eyes and the nose and the ears and the mouth, and even st they stick the foot up the backside so that the soul can't go out the backside. And this way they force the soul to go out the top of the head. And if it's a great yogi who is really detached, you'll find there's a small hole there in the top of the head where the soul went out the top of the head. Because the soul goes out with great force, just like in that picture here. So this is how you get instant liberation. Immediately, out, back to Godhead. Of course, Prabhupada also makes the point in the purport there that you have to be contemplating the Lord and the desire to associate with the Lord and to serve Him. And then you can go there to the spiritual world. You have to, you don't just think about liberation, but you actually contemplate the Lord and you have the desire to go there and serve Him. And then you can liberate yourself. Now the gradual process is different. The gradual process called Krama Mukti. If one desires to attain Brahma Loka or other higher realms in this universe at the time of giving up the body, one does not give up the mind and senses. Rather, with the mind and senses, one goes to enjoy those planets. Yeah, with the, with the previous process, the, the rapid process, the, the mind and senses are merged into the soul. The mind and senses are just simply merged with the soul and the desire for service to the Lord. But here it's different. So here you don't give up the mind and senses. But with the mind and senses we go to enjoy those planets, higher planets, right? The higher planets. First of all, Swarga Loka, the heavenly planets, where uh, Vamanadeva appeared there, like that. And then from there, Swarga Loka, then you, make to, you go on up to Mahar Loka. There, remember, four planets above Swarga Loka. There's a, oh, it, it's described also, you have to go to, uh, what's it, Vaishvanara, you go to the Vaishvanara planet and purify the existence. Vaishvanara planet is all fire and so we purify the body and get rid of all the gross body. You only have a subtle body, you only have mind and senses and ego and we, pu we can purify the body and the fire of the Vaishvanara planet and then go through there through the Sisumara planets or the Milky Way and go up to the higher planets, to Maharloka and Brahmaloka. 
at the end of the life of Brahma, we will see that the lower planets are all burning and they want, they want to go up and up. So the, the yogis will leave where they are, they'll go up to Brahma Loka, Satya Loka, to be with Lord Brahma. And when Lord Brahma gives up his life, of course, he just actually doesn't die because they have subtle bodies. And so, when in their subtle bodies, they're able to uh, purify that further and go back to Godhead, go through the different coverings, give up all the traces of contamination which may be there in the subtle body, and they go through the different coverings of the universe and enter into the spiritual world, if they're qualified. But not everybody who goes to Satya Loka does that. It's described, oh, yeah, okay. Can somebody read this, please? All the Siddhis mentioned above are teachers of domination over the world. Devotees of the Lord are not ambitious to dominate all and temporary phenomena. On the contrary, a devotee wants to be dominated by the Supreme Predominator, the Lord. Desire to serve the Lord, the supreme predominator, is spiritual or transcendental. And one has to attain this purification of mind and the senses to get admission into the spiritual kingdom. Okay, so the devotees are not ambitious to dominate. This is a difference, right? There's the devotees and the yogis. A devotee wants to, to be dominated. He doesn't want to dominate. He wants to be dominated. He just wants to serve. So that is the qualification to go back to Godhead. That desire to simply to serve the Lord and to to associate with him, then we can be qualified to enter the spiritual world. So three types of perfection are described. Now they all got up to Satya Loka, they all came up to Lord Brahma's planet at the top of the universe, but they don't all go back to Godhead. So there are different people. First of all, Karmi, a Karmi, a fruit of worker who attains a specific planet by dint of pious activities, attains places in terms of his comparative pious activities. So sometimes people will get, they'll be very, very pious and they'll get all the way up to Brahma Loka. But they have no connection with the Lord and they have no desire for liberation. They just want to enjoy the material world. So according to their piety, they'll be situated in a particular planet in the material world. And then you've got the jnani. Now the jnani, he has attained the place, he got up to Satya Loka by dint of Virata or Hiranyagarbha worship. Hiranyagarbha means Lord Brahma. And he's liberated along with the liberation of Brahma. So at the end of Lord Brahma's life, they have to, they go up there and they have to wait for the end of Lord Brahma's life. And with the end of Lord Brahma's life, then Lord Brahma, he may enter into the spiritual world or he may enter into the Brahma Jyoti. It's not sure. It depends on what Lord Brahma's position is. Lord Brahma is not always a pure devotee. That sometimes Lord Brahma also enters into Mahavishnu. That, they, that happens with the four Kumaras and like that. Sometimes they have to take birth again, they come back in the material world. So the jnani, he gets up there to Satya Loka and he will be also liberated. He may, his liberation of course would be Sayuja Mukti. He's liberated into the Brahman, into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti from Satya Loka. And then finally, the devotee is described. But one who attains the place by dint of devotional service 
can penetrate into the different coverings of the universe and thus ultimately disclose his spiritual identity in the absolute atmosphere of spiritual existence. So in other words, he got up to Satya Loka and then he has to go through the coverings of the universe and he goes through each of the coverings, then he will return the elements of that particular, you know, that particular element which is there in the covering, he will return it from his own body and he'll go on and to the next covering and go through that covering. So it's all described in the purport of text number 28 there. You can read about how the yogi, these different yogis achieve perfection. And life on Satya Loka is also described. What do you know about life on Satya Loka? Anybody like to tell me about what is the life like there in Satya Loka? Hey Krishna Maharaj, the, life, the duration of life is very, very, uh, not uh, like um, almost day. That's why sometimes it is said that eternal because the, uh, the duration of life is very long. Yes. Uh, and there are no um, uh, diseases, no, no uh, material uh, discomforts, nothing. Right, yes. No disease, no material discomfort, no anxiety, right? Is, what is there? What is the particular... Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. There also it is given in Brihat Bhagavata Amrita that Brahma also performs uh, sacrifices in the morning, his duty is sacrifices in the morning. He reads 10, uh, ten crores of uh, verses of uh, scriptures and then uh, his duty is there. It, it's a long duty. Uh, I mean, like, just like how we do in the material world, there also they have morning duties which they perform for upgrading themselves to the spiritual world. Okay, very good, yes. But there was a particular mentality, a feeling there among the residents of Satya Loka. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Actually, it is, their mentality is mainly of compassion uh, for the uh, living entity who are suffering in the lower planetary system. So they are very elevated uh, living being and they are very compassionate and uh, right. this is the main mentality. Yes, right. thank you Prabhu, right. That feeling of compassion is there, right. Yes. All right. This is a quote here. This is from Chaitanya Charitamrita, but it also relates to what we've just been reading about. Would someone please read it? The residents of Brahmaloka can attain perfection in three different ways. Virtuous persons who reach Brahmaloka by dint of their pious work become masters of various planets after the resurrection of Brahma. Those who have worshipped Garbhadokshai Vishnu are liberated with Brahma and those who are pure devotees of the personality of Godhead at once push through the covering of the universe and enter the spiritual sky. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 5.22 per quote. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. So you can see very, just what, like we're reading here from the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam here, the same thing is brought up there, is quoted there in Chaitanya Charitamrita Purpur, the three different kinds of perfection. That the karmi will get some position in the material world and as a, maybe a master of a planet there. And the dhyani, He's worshipping Garbhodashai Vishnu, he will be liberated with Brahma and the devotees will go back to Godhead. An important point Prabhupada brings up in the purport, text number 30, hearing and reading are both mandatory. When we speak of hearing and chanting, it means that not only should one chant and hear of the holy name of the Lord as Rama, Krishna, or systematically the 16 names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. But one should also read and hear the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of devotees. We want to purify ourselves, right? Yoga practice is all about purification. And as devotees, we get our purification not only by chanting, but also by reading. Reading gives us the opportunity to also hear. So it's very important for us, that, right? The fourth offense in chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, to blaspheme the Vedic literature and literature in pursuance of the Vedic version. And if we don't read regularly the scriptures, then that is like blaspheming the scriptures. So very important for us that we should hear as well as chant the holy name. We also need to read and hear the scriptures and discuss them. Okay. Creepers, unwanted creepers. So again from Chaitanya Charitamrita, this is from the chapter in relation to the cleaning of the Gundicha temple, how Lord Chaitanya had gone there to clean the temple and how he was very uh, concerned that the devotees should gather up all the dust and dirt and straw and everything which was there in the Gundicha temple before bringing Lord Jagannath there. So the same way we want to sit the Lord in our heart, we have to get rid of all of the uh, dirt, the contamination is there in the form of these different uh, weeds, the weeds which block the growth of the creeper of devotion. Because we're cultivating a love for Krishna, so in cultivating a love for Krishna we're watering the seed of devotion and by watering the seed of devotion then sometimes the weeds also grow and the weeds can choke the plant of devotion. So we have to recognize what are these different unwanted creepers. So Chaitanya Chara Tamrita said, Nishidachara Kutini Nati Jivahimsa La Puja Pratishtadi Yata Upasaka Gana. So Upasaka, that's the weeds, right? Unnecessary creepers growing with the bhakti creeper are the creepers of behavior unacceptable for those trying to attain perfection. Unacceptable behavior. We're trying to attain perfection, we do things, it's not acceptable. You, you do certain things like, you know, watch television and uh, watch movies and gamble and so on, these kind of things, unacceptable. Diplomatic behavior, being diplomatic, this is also not, this is another creeper. Animal killing, mundane profiteering, mundane adoration and mundane importance. All these are unwanted creepers. So Lord Chaitanya was so strict, he was so careful. He cleaned the temple twice and he used his own cloth to clean it sometimes. So the same way we have to clean our heart. Okay, achieving the supreme. Ananya Bhakti. Oh. All right. Someone like to read for us here? Uh, Ananya Bhakti 33 to 37. Nayami Paramamsthanam Archer Adiga Dinvina Garuda Skanda Maropia Yate Cham Anibaritaha. By my personal desire, I bring my unalloyed devotees to my supreme abode. Placing them on the shoulders of Garuda, they return without having to undergo the path of light. Varaha Puran. Hare Krishna. Right. The path of light, of course, is described in the Bhagavad Gita in the 8th chapter. Lord Krishna describes there are two ways to leave. One is, the, one is there's the path leaving the body, it may be in the path of light or may be in the path in darkness. So here is described, devotee doesn't have to undergo the path of light. Devotee just simply, we just simply depend on the grace of Krishna. 
Krishna personally comes or Krishna will send Garuda to come to pick us up and bring us back to Godhead. So we just simply depend on Krishna. What does Krishna want? Does he want to bring us back? Then Krishna will arrange for us to go back. Like Dhruva Maharaj, the Vishnu Duras came and brought him back to the spiritual world or took him to Dhruva Loka. So Krishna's personal desire, he brings his devotees back to Godhead. It's not, not to do, in other words, leaving the body, it doesn't depend on the time and it doesn't depend on the place. What does it depend on? Your consciousness, your remembrance at the lifetime of death. What yes, are you thinking of? right. Yes, it depends on our consciousness. It's nothing to do with it. You know, you may be in the perfect place, the perfect time and everything, and you may be totally in Maya. And so it's very important, the consciousness is very important. It doesn't matter where you are or what time it is, it's not important if you're a devotee. That point is made very clear. The direct path of bhakti. There are many indirect methods for deliverance from the clutches of material existence, but none of them is as easy and auspicious as bhakti yoga. The means of jnana and yoga and other allied disciplines are not independent in delivering a performer. Such activities help one to reach the stage of bhakti yoga after many, many years. So, jnana and yoga are not going to deliver us, but they can help to bring us to bhakti yoga. But <laughs> it may take a long time. As already explained in the texts of Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, either direct bhakti yoga or the means which ultimately culminate in bhakti yoga without any tinge of fruitive activity constitutes the highest form of religion. Everything else is simply a waste of time for the performer. Hmm? So everything else, you may think it's so important, if it's not bhakti yoga, it's just shrama eva hi kevala, right? You studied in the first canto Srimad Bhagavatam, Duties executed by all men are only so much useless labour if they do not provoke attraction for the Supreme Lord. So Prabhupada says here, simply a waste of time to do other things. Srila Sridhar Swami, the original commentator on the Srimad Bhagavatam, and all other Acharyas like Jiva Goswami agree that Bhakti Yoga is not only easy, simple, natural and free from trouble, but is the only source of happiness for the human being. That's text 33 purport. The only source of happiness, bhakti yoga. I mean, any other kind of happiness is just simply illusion, sense gratification, flickering, temporary. Okay, so let's see what we covered. We talked about the connection between the first and second chapter, right? Does somebody remember? What is the connection? Lord Brahma, uh, he meditates on the universal form and thus he regained his lost consciousness. And that is how the concept of Lord within the heart is emphasized in the chapter 2. Yes, we want to, we're, Sukadeva Goswami is presenting the three phases of the Absolute Truth. First of all, in the first chapter he was presenting Brahman, 
contemplating the Lord through the universal form. And now in the second chapter, he's explaining about the Lord in the heart. And by giving, he was giving the example of Lord Brahma and his forgetfulness and the power of contemplating the Virata Rup. It helped him to again recreate the universe. Okay? And then we have a we, we give a brief overview of the second chapter. Sukadeva Goswami began by giving powerful presentation to Maharaj Parikshit about the importance of giving up any kind of attraction to the material world. Remember we spoke about the Vedas. Sukadeva Goswami was telling Maharaj Parikshit that don't be attracted by the words of the Vedas because the Vedas offer heavenly enjoyment and pleasure there, long life. And so don't be attracted to these things. So Sukadeva, and then Sukadeva Goswami wants Maharaj Parikshit to renounce all thoughts of sense gratification and encourages him to depend on nature. He said, you don't have to go to heaven to be comfortable. You, you can, you, everything which is necessary is provided for us here on this planet. And he gave examples, right? We don't need a bed. We don't need pillows. We don't need even food. We can eat simply what grows wild. I, 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 some, some years ago, I met a woman. She told me how she'd been living in the mountains in China. She was a, a Buddhist monk and she'd gone to live in the mountains in China. And she just lived totally alone in the mountains there. And she would eat whatever grew there. She would find things like wild potatoes and wild herbs and so on, which she would eat. And somehow she was able to maintain her existence. So there are rare souls who can do that kind of thing. Of course, we're not required to do that. But we, do, we are required to minimize the demands of the body. Don't be too much attached to luxury and comfort and security. Because that's illusion. So Sukadeva Goswami spoke about these things for some time. And then he talked about contemplating the super soul and he described the super soul and then after describing the super soul meditating on the super soul then he gave the immediate the quick way to go back to godhead and then he after describing the right. the, the rapid way then he spoke about the gradual way and at the end then we have Sukadev Goswami's reply to Maharaj Pariksit's question that bhakti is the answer to all the problems. All right, the, the process of achieving the Supreme through mystic yoga. This is the rapid process, right? Anybody like to tell us a little bit about this, how we can do this? Krishna Maharaj, in that uh, the yogi uh, who does not have any material enjoying mentality, they only take up this path and then they through the yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, uh, pratyahara, dhyan, dharana and samadhi, they directly uh, liberate themselves into the Brahman. Yeah, the, the, the process actually speaks about lifting the chakras the life air up through the different chakras and then having the life air go out the top of the head. Yes, my Right? So that was the rapid process. And then the gradual ascent through the higher planets. What's the gradual ascent? How are you going to do it? A yogi who who is not completely materially renounced so he will when he leaves the body he will have uh, the, uh, he goes along with the settled body 
in the you know then he slowly purifies that means giving the most grossest to the most subtlest and then uh, through going through the different different planets and finally he goes okay. to sarga then find, you know ultimately he goes to the uh, brahma loka and after that from brahma loka either along with brahma he will go back he will get the impersonal liberation or whenever in the middle he wants he'll he'll get the impersonal liberation yeah mentions about also going to vaishvanara planet which is a fire planet where everything is purified so that he can go on into the higher planets which are more subtle okay and three types of perfection then preaching application the principles of bhagavad dharma in a contemporary context yes can we hear some comments on this? How to how did we present Hare Bhagavad Krishna. Dharma in a contemporary context? Yeah, uh, Maharaj, actually we remember uh, the slide where there were two pictures. In one side there were uh, uh, two sadhus sitting with uh, ashes in the body and uh, that was uh, very difficult to follow in current uh, uh, life situation. And on the other side, we saw that how <clears throat> in Iskon, uh, sannyasi or a brahmachari, they are going to the householders uh, and they are showing how to live a uh, simple life and Krishna conscious life in the principles of Srimad Bhagavatam. So yes. that is more practical and uh, applicable in today's context. Yes, thank you. Very nice. Now, in the first slide, it was uh, showing how people were chatting and then wasting their time. But in the second one, we saw how the, the same time was effective, effectively being used for preaching to all others and, uh, you know, helping all others. Mm. Yes, right. So caring, right? Our movement is serving and caring about others. It's not for selfish means. When devotees are out there distributing books, they're not doing it to get rich. They want to give benefit to others. They really want to help others. Therefore, they're going out there and preaching. We should appreciate them. They're the greatest welfare workers. Okay, very good. Okay, just to complete here. We cannot discover the mysteries of the Supreme Lord by our mundane endeavours. They are only revealed by His grace to the proper devotees. These mysteries are gradually disclo disclosed to the various devotees in proportion to their gradual development of their service attitude. From the Adi Lila, Chapter 1, text 52. So the mysteries of the Lord. There are so many mysteries, so many things we don't know about the Lord. But the Lord, He does reveal some of these things, these things to His devotees according to their service attitude, according to their spiritual development. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. So for some devotees, Krishna will reward them. He will reveal to them more of his mysteries. His existence as Paramatma, for example, can be realized by one who has the single qualification of submissiveness and who thereby becomes a surrendered soul. The development of submissiveness is the cause of proportionate spiritual realization by which one can ultimately meet the Supreme Lord in person as a man meets another man face to face. So in this way we want you to understand how we can realize the super soul. The qualification is submissive. Submissive and submission means they be, they're surrendered souls. 
like that, this, this point, submission, surrender, service and surrender. Okay? So, are there any questions now? Anyone, any points you want to bring up for clarification or anything on the second chapter? No? Krishna Maharaj, one more question. Uh, basically, the, how the soul travels is not very detailed in this various local centers. Uh, do you take it as a, only as an academic interest point of view or should we uh, something to them to implement their life? So, I'm sorry, Prabhu, your voice is not too clear for me. Yeah, Maharaj, uh, the, close, the soul travels different planets. Uh, yes. Should we study as the only academic point of view or you can learn something in that process also? Well, certainly we, it's interesting to know something about it, you know, to, to be able to explain to people something like that, that there is a difference how the soul travels according to the spiritual practice of the person, according to the service attitude, the soul is going to travel in different ways, you know. These are it's describing the yoga process here, the second chapter. The yogi meditating on the super soul. So how he goes out of the body and how he achieves his destination, what his spiritual destination is. So it, is it academic? Yeah, there's some academic part there, but it's this is Shastra, right? We're accepting this. This knowledge is being given to us. And it's, it's coming not just from Prabhupada, this is from the, all the Acharyas, they have described all these things. So we should, we should know something about it, we should, be, we should know a little bit about it, you know. How exactly the soul leaves the body and where it's going, what will be its destination. Of course, for most people you could say, well, they're going to Yamaraj, you know, the Yamadutas were going to come, they're going to take them. That's also described later on, that's in the third canto, you'll read that. But here, second canto, we're reading about, you know, Sukadeva Goswami is describing about Paramatma realization. So he's describing about these yogis, how they leave the body through the super soul, contemplating the super soul. And it's not just one process, we see different processes. There's the rapid process and the gradual process. Again, depending on the mood, the nature of the individual. Some people want to travel, they want to see the higher planets. So, that's there, that tendency is there. Sukadeva Goswami, however, is going to encourage Maharaj Parikshit not to be attracted, to go and see these higher planets. There's nothing there, he's already told him. No, there's no reason to go to these higher planets, there's nothing there. It's just simply all birth and death. Temporary pleasure, the illusion of happiness. So, Sukadeva Goswami wants Maharaj Pariksit to go back home, back to Godhead. Of course, Sukadeva Goswami knows Maharaj Pariksit is a devotee. So, he, he's He's not going to have, uh, he's not too much worried about Maharaj Pariksit being attracted to these things. But again, for others, they, they need to know, they need to be told that you go there, you can spend a lot of time, you can waste a lot of time going there to these other places, to see these other planets and go there. And you get up there and then you have to wait for Lord Brahma to die and look at the length of Lord Brahma's life, how long he lives, it's so long, you have a long wait there. <laughs> so we should understand everything. It gives us a, it, then we have a complete picture of everything. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. I have one, one, one stupid question, uh, Maharaj. Uh, 
like for example maraj when uh, this gradual process we are going we want to see other planets and then go to spiritual world so is that uh, possible that to remember what we were in this material world while we were going to upper planetary system is that possible to remember to remember past life yeah past life like you know from this material world we want to go to upper planetary system and then go to gradually going so in that time we can remember our material you know in this planet earthly planet we can remember that well just like a dream you know you know every night we have so many dreams we don't remember the dreams so this life also is just like a dream we give up this body you know it's just a dream we don't remember our pe previous lives we don't remember all these things it's not important for us it's all gone it's just there in the mind you know we're going to give up. The whole point is to go to these higher levels, we have to purify our existence. And one of the processes of purification is for the mind to enter into the, the soul. The, the mind becomes completely focused on the desire of the soul, the super soul, as the servant of the super soul. What is the desire of the super soul? So there's no thought about past or remembering things about because that will all that will just block our mood of concentration on the supreme lord and our devotion to him we'll be contemplating on the past this is these are all just anarthas these attachments to the past and our bodies and material things and positions which we had it's all so temporary so we want to give all of these things up and, and in order to come to the higher levels, to go to these higher planets, we have to purify our existence. And that means forgetting all of these things. What we do need to remember is the Lord, to remember the Supreme Lord. And that's why we need to hear. We need to hear more and more. So Sukadeva Goswami is encouraging that point. And to Maharaj Parikshit, that you have to hear more and more. So Maharaj Parikshit, he's given up eating and drinking, he just wants to hear. He's completely focused. And we ourselves, we also want to focus, our real focus is on hearing, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, discussing the Bhagavatam with the devotees. So we forget about everything else. We don't want to remember all the past how we deviated, how we wasted so much time in the material world, how we were so lost in this material life. We want to forget that. We just want to concentrate on remembering Krishna. Okay? Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. I was just, when you were answering, I was just contemplating Maharaj. Then in that case, if it is then Krama Marga, then why does the jiva aspire for that marga? Because then there is always a danger, then he may get stuck in one of the planet, right? Yes. Or will he have that enthusiasm or that determination to go forward? Yes. Why he is taking different steps and going? Well, this is it. It's just pointed out that some jivas do like that because they still, they're still drawn to the material world. They're curious to know about the higher planets. You know, when you when you go there and you see these places, then it's so, just so, just like when people travel, you know, people on earth, they travel, they want to go and travel. Why? They want to see these places. Oh, I want to go there. I want to see, you know. <laughs> you go there and see, what do you see? You, you want to, people want to go to America. What, do you, what will you see in America? Oh, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and you know, everywhere the same. Everywhere, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. The same business is going on everywhere. But still, the mind, our minds are so much an illusion. We're drawn, we want to see these things. And it happens even for great yogis, that they want to go to the higher planets. Because in the higher planets, they will have the full mystic powers. They have all these mystic powers and they can enjoy these mystic powers traveling. 
we know there are demigods traveling in airplanes. And so they have also airplanes in the higher planets and they can travel. You don't need to have tickets, you don't need to have passports and visas and things. They just travel by their yoga powers. So it's very attractive. And there's great saintly persons also, Brigamuni and the four Kumaras and so many great sages, they're all there and you may want to see them all before you go back to Godhead. So we have to be so focused, we just want Krishna, we don't want anything else. We don't want anybody else, we only want Krishna. We're not concerned, uh, Lord Shiva, oh, no, I just want Krishna. So it, it's not so easy, you know, when you think about it, it's not so easy to just say, no, 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 I, I just want Krishna. You have to be really chaste. And that's vaya vasayatmika, vaya vasaya buddhi, right? Completely focused on Krishna. You don't want anything else, anyone else. Understand? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, uh, uh, this is a question which is not directly related, but something to other process and devotional service. Uh, recently, uh, I came across two people like, who were introduced to Krishna consciousness maybe uh, maybe a few months or few years before, and they took up the process, the chanting. But then after some time, uh, Three families, uh, same thing happened, different families at different times. That they told that when they took up to chanting and devotional service, they had more difficulties. Earlier, the life was very nice, smooth, and now they have more miseries. There are so many things happening, losing jobs or relatives' deaths. And then they come back with a question and ask that uh, when we took up to chanting Hare Krishna, it has become more difficult, and now we are losing faith and we wish to do other process we were very happy so in such situation the answer can be given to them so they don't get discouraged and at the same time we continue how, how can we answer those different points but they they gave up the process no they, they were asking like uh, i want to like like example, one devotee, uh, one person, he, he, they were chanting in Shiva Mantra. And then when they took up to Krishna consciousness, they said, I lost my job, I had a lot of financial difficulty. Oh, when so they, now I feel I should go back to chanting Shiva Mantra. Uh, when they were so, chanting Hare Krishna, they lost their job. Th that is what they are saying. Uh -huh. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they feel like that. And also one another case where one Mataji uh, was coming to Krishna consciousness, she just took up the process and in a span of one year, uh, she lost her uh, very young son-in-law and then uh, many, uh, her father was there and then there were so many things happening and then now she start, stop, started coming in, in the life. So in such cases, how can we deal with that? Yes, well, may have to. We should, we should tell them actually you were meant to suffer more, but Krishna only gave you little suffering. Krishna took away your job, but you can always find another job. You know, you always find... But actually, if you hadn't come to Krishna, you could have, you could have been dead. You could have lost your whole life. You, could, you were meant to suffer much more, but because you've come to Krishna, he only took away your job. So we have to encourage people to have faith. Of course, it's, it's faith. I had similar experience also. We had one man, he took initiation, and a little while later he found out that he had cancer. And so he was very disappointed that he'd become a cancer patient after taking initiation. So I encouraged him, I said, well, he said, he said, it's very difficult for me to explain to my friends, to my relatives that I've become a Krishna devotee and now I've got cancer and Krishna didn't protect me. So I told him, I said, well, you have to be reasonable. 
You know, this is the material world and we're all going to die one day. So Krishna gave you warning. He's given you a chance to prepare. He said, before you were, when you were not a devotee, you still could have got cancer, but you, didn't, you wouldn't know how to prepare for death. But now you're a devotee, now you know how to prepare. You can prepare yourself for a better next life. But without being a devotee, you didn't know anything about your next life. You didn't know how to prepare for death. Death is still there. Same problem is there. But now you're a devotee, you know how to prepare for it. And it's not a big problem for a devotee. The devotees, they, they meet death just as other people. But the difference is for the devotee, it's an opportunity to come closer to Krishna. So we have to see the problems, the miseries of material life are an opportunity to come closer to Krishna. And Queen Kunti also talked like that in her prayers, right? Let all these uh, calamities happen again and again so that I might see you again and again. And seeing you means I no longer see birth and death. So people have to have faith that these difficulties which come, they're going to come for every, everyone. They have, we have these problems. But these difficulties are an opportunity to come, to come closer to Krishna. And that's more important than the job or the good health or eternal life or anything. So people have to be have to be convinced. Yeah, it's difficult. It's hard for people to tell them these things, but they have to have they have to have that faith. Faith is the first thing. Okay, so I'll meet you again tomorrow, same time. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna.